course. How, how can I do anything without you? Before we start, I have a couple things to say. First of all, whatever I say in this video is not 100% true. I'm doing this for fun. I, I don't know for whose fun because I actually... <laughs> I decided that I would spend time trying to make a theory that I at least at 1% understand. <laughs> I decided to bring you along on the journey. And I tried to do it as short as I can. Like, there are so many things that I did not include. For example, a lot of their music videos include references to movies. For example, uh, Give Me Your TMI, reference to Kingsman. Uh, what else is there? What else is there? The sound music video, I think, has a reference to the movie Poltergeist. Um, so, you know, I do not include every of these things. So, if I actually had to, like, write <laughs> everything, it would be 100 pages. I just try to include the most important parts. This video is a mix of my opinions, my observations, and also some stays that I found on the internet and uh, I will include links in the description. So yes, if you have any follow-up questions to what I'm saying about the worlds, about the theories, the... don't ever ask me them. And also, I'm not lying, at the start I was like, oh, this is so much fun, but at the end I was actually losing my mind. I actually started losing my mind in the middle. What about the class series story? Anyways, let's start with the mixtape and the elevator. This is the start of a storyline where we find out, establish that there's two worlds coexisting with each other. In Hollywood music video, we see Stray Kids in dark clothes. That's important because this is how we're gonna differentiate them from each other and they are walking around this school looking all sad and by the way we understand that this is kind of their moment to let go of their childhood this is the moment they're looking around and understand that they actually adopt them but most of them come to conclusion, come to understanding that yeah, childhood is over, we're adults now and, they, and we see all of them laughing, having a good time, except for one member, Han. Han has a harder time to accept that he's an adult now, which is looking in the mirror. And Han decided that the adult life is not for him. He's ready to go to the different universe, <laughs> but not to be an adult. And there, he meets the other Stray Kids. He just calls them real Stray Kids and universe Stray Kids, okay? <laughs> but in the other universe that Han created, we see them all happy. They're carefree, but Han, once again, who is the fucking vibe? <laughs> because Han, in that universe, actually accepted that he needs to be an adult. So, like, it's the other way around from the first <laughs> universe, as far as I understand. By the end of the music video, we see Han running in the field. But the members who catch up with him are universe stray kids, not the real stray kids. Because Han, real Han, does not want to accept the changes. He does not want to become an adult. And those um, Universe Street Kids also don't want that, so they join together. The video finishes with us clearly like establishing there's two parts. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is Beware and Spread My Wings performances video. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about every performance video <laughs> that they ever released, but I think in those two music videos we clearly establish that the colors mean a lot in Stray Kids storyline because Beware is such a red <laughs> music video while in Spread My Wings, like, the background is the sky so it looks way softer then they were filming the dance in Elevator we see, like, the lights switching from no normal lighting to red and every time it's in red it's the Stray Kids in uh, colorful clothes, not in dark clothes. In dark clothes are real Stray Kids and colorful clothes are the universe Stray Kids. So we once again established that red, clones, then we go to I am not trailer. Stray Kids are showing us clearly that they don't want to 
listen to society. They're not okay with girls and they're showing it to us. But then we see Ayan. Tan tan tan. <laughs> in the bus driving to like, you know, this place where he will be like ours. And on one of the bus stops, he sees the other version of himself. And we see Ayan getting up from his seat and walking out on the bus stop, which means that Ayan was the first member to interact with his own clone, which I think is a big deal. In District 9 music video, members are standing around the flower fence, but there's no flowers, they're just like leaves. Leaf is just a place with no light, no hope, no freedom, but suddenly Chan says a flower. But the flower is alive because there is like a little peak of sunlight and because of that Chan understands that oh my god there's some light there's some hope in this world and he tries to go and follow the light and there he finds like a wall <laughs> that keeps them all in this place and he decides to break through that wall but also he has to take his kids with him right he's the father of seven so he gives them the red notes where they read about the plan and by the end of the music video they escape through like through a bus they crash a bus into the wall and behind the wall they create like a space <laughs> for themselves and other people who want to be free from society and called it district nine after that we go to grow up and in grow up we see the universe version of three kids getting on the bus just like it, they did in District 9, but in Grow Up it all looks way cuter. And according to the sign, they are heading to District 9 on the bus. But, you know, it's just showing the different universes, but they all try to find their way. Then we go to my pace. And at first I was like, what theories are there? Like what, what can, I, you saw the my pace music video. It looks just like a fun music video without theories, just just having fun. We see that all Street Kids members in my face wear like a football related shirt. This user, Molly Nitor, wore a real one. And they actually went out of the way to discover like which shirt is from which football club and like they found everyone except for one person. And it's Felix. <laughs> because his shirt is actually not related to football. Are you following me? <laughs> Who thinks of this stuff? Felix's shirt is not related to football. Felix wears a shirt that says... That's embarrassing. I was studying German for three months in the university and I can't even read. Schiedsrichter <laughs> Faustball. It translates from German to English as Fistball Referee. Which is... Fistball is a completely different game to football and he's also not a player, he's a referee because he's a compass. If you like don't really care about theories, you probably know that Felix is a compass because this is like one of the few things that I knew before like diving deep into it. Felix is a compass, he leads them anywhere and referee does like pretty much the same thing, he just shows a way to the people who play, right? He's a compass, he's a glitch, whoever came up with a theory, did you expect me to look at the football club's t-shirt? But also, once again, to prove that he's like a glitch. Before he's part in the bridge, there's like a long, like black shot with just glitches. <laughs> and then we see like him singing his part. He is the referee, he's leading the game, he's the compass. And I, this is the moment where I actually started to slowly lose my mind. The music video ends with them running into the tunnel and you may ask where they're running. Into the IMU music video. <laughs> Everything is glitching. We also see Han like breaking the camera to prevent being watched and the glitching stops. Coincidence? I don't know, I'm not sure of anything. I think that IMU is their step to finding themselves because the title itself says something, right? Because it's a trilogy. The first one, I'm not, I am who, I am you. So in the I am who, they like question, who the fuck am I? In I am you, they actually kind of like, I am you. So they actually start 
a little bit to realize who they are and they found a place on a rooftop to settle as a group and, and they start like making that place their home and this is why we see like them doing very domestic things for example jumping in the shower yes he wasn't clothed but like but you don't think it would be like this easy right <laughs> but them finding home yeah right when we see in a young scene we see two months and remember those two months you're gonna see them a lot <laughs> anyways after that we see sun min with the camera which is also which is also what we're gonna see in the future, remember that? In general, since I'm You is like the end of the trilogy, I think they like placed a lot of easter eggs into the music video for the future music videos. So when in the future you're gonna see the ordinary trailer and you're gonna see Submi in the camera, you're gonna go, oh, I saw that in I'm You. But then we see all of them sitting on their couch, having fun, Except for Han once again ruining the vibes. And the music video ends with them like kind of looking off the rooftop on the city. And it's also grey, so sad and dark. Kind of bad. So they look at all of it and try to come up with a plan. <laughs> and we're going to Claire. Trilogy. Claire is, I think, a French word for key. Before they released Mira, they released an unveiled track for one of the best songs in human history. It's still such a mystery to me why street kids don't sing this song every given opportunity. Because listen to me, if I ever had a brain, a talent, a skill to write a song like that, I would never stop singing it. And of course I'm talking about the myth, the legend, the Chronosaurus. <laughs> A Grammy was not given to Chronosaurus, and this is why I don't think Grammy is legit. But yeah, important thing to put out in Chronosaurus, Ayen, yeah, Ayen found a key which starts the Claire series. In this place, Stray Kids decided to do that's right. Babe, wake up, we are overthrowing the government. The main thing we're paying attention to is the walkie talkie that Yen Yen uses in the start. Uh, just remember that, because we're gonna come back to her in the future. <laughs> in Claire 2 trailer, we see Stray Kids taking an elevator. Their elevator stops and shows us the world that we saw in Mira. Still the same government on the top, with the same corruption, capitalism, or whatever. And we see Hyun Jin looking like... Like, he looks annoyed and disgusted at them, which... In my theory, <laughs> I think that, yeah, in Mirror they try to cover up people. I don't think it actually worked. And the elevator doors are closed and we are going down. When we go to side effects and in side effects teaser, Ayan once again asks us. At this point, we know that Ayan knows something. We just don't know what exactly he knows, but he knows something like that other members don't. They have a bus ticket to the new world. Then we see the bus and this is actually the first time where we see like a guy with a hook tattoo. We will see him in the future but let me tell you this when I first like actually paid attention to the music video and not just the hook tattoo I was like oh, I saw you before <laughs> in another music video in the future oh my god but yeah he is the driver he takes the uh, tickets and we see a split screen. Hi! Two different storylines at the same time. The universe Stray Kids actually like went on the bus while the real Stray Kids decided to go their way. Once again, they don't want to follow the path that everyone else had. They want to make their own way through life, through the industry. Like you can relate it to a lot of things. First of all, the dancers in all black are uh, mirroring Stray Kids, which again, probably another way of them to show that there's two storylines, two versions of Stray Kids, and those like people in black clothes probably show like Molly. <laughs> but also, we see that once again, one of the members is not having as much fun as the others. And at this time, it's Hyunjin. Like, we, cl we clearly see that Sofen is bothering him. And also, Tumun. 
because how can we make it more confusing? Anyways, we see Hyun Jin clearly like is scared of something and like we see Felix looking off the window of the car that they took and uh, like Felix is happy, he's smiling, he points at something, he clearly bothered Hyun Jin that he like, uh, like physically stopped him <laughs> And Felix didn't like understand what's like the big deal. So they kind of like had a little argument, not to the point that they're gonna have to in the future. And we are stopping abruptly because it turns out the road that they were taken is blocked, so they cannot go any further. And all of them like get out to like kind of think, what are we gonna do? So let me decide that this is like the perfect time to take a picture. Once again, to me with the camera. That picture annoys Hyunjin so much that he like starts fighting, like physically fighting. And as soon as Hyunjin puts his hands on Sunmin, we see everything around them becoming yellow. But what does it mean? I don't know. Thank you for watching the video. <laughs> In my opinion, this yellow thing symbolizes that this decision like made a big impact. I I don't know how to explain that actually. It's just to show the side effects of the action, right? Like Hyunjin did it's like saving in the game. I don't know, like he did that and it's like, yeah, you did that and you cannot undo that. But yeah, they continue driving into the different direction until whoop, the tire breaks. And um, yeah, we just have to go on foot now. And yeah, while walking, they actually see the bus that, like, at the... Remember the bus at the beginning, they, like, did not take the bus. Are you following the storyline? <laughs> the bus, like, did not stop to pick them up. Uh, which, again, in my opinion, shows that, like, you decided at the beginning to not take the bus, now leave it there. <laughs> like, like, this is the side effect of your decision in the past. Now, do that. No, come on. <laughs> but also we have another split screen here and uh, we see the real Stray Kids and the universe Stray Kids. And we see the difference, how their decisions impact their life. Because Stray Kids, real Stray Kids, want to break the boundaries. They want to make their own way and uh, to reach their goal. They have to do so many things. Like it's way more difficult while the universe trickies are <laughs> just sleeping on the bus like they're they're, they're not caring about anything they're just following the system like they're not the ones who making their way because in the driver's seat it's not them it's the captain hook and to finally finish side effects off i told you side effects is a lot <laughs> in side effects we actually see that the real true kids actually being exhausted like we we did not see that in mira they still were like full of energy while in side effects i think that they actually started to understand that making your own path your own way is way more difficult and i also think that this difference like, can be seen in the lyrics for example in clay one mira title track they said it's not hard in this rough jungle it was me who ran into it i'm okay while <laughs> right, like the next title track, Clay, Clay too. And the side effects, they said, I threw myself with trust in me, but why am I being hurt? Like we actually see them struggling here. <laughs> we did not see that like before, but now enough with side effects. We're going to astronaut. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for complaining a lot, but while writing this, I actually felt like I was losing my fucking mind and astronaut, I actually, I, especially after side effects, I was like, ooh, I was, my eyes was twitching. Once again, in Astronaut, we see them having fun with Yeni in light blue sweater. Point that out because it's important. <laughs> and then she goes down. And remember, I told you, we're gonna discuss it later. We see Chan, who talks through a walkie talkie, with a Yen from the mirror. Then Hyun Jin sees an orb, whatever it is, and uh, he starts just running. And while running, 
we see a lot of things related to the past music videos like the bathroom side effects the maze from the mirror in the meantime felix is still glitching and i actually lost the plot hyunjin runs into the clones of uh, han sunmin mino and Ayan, and they all wear the same clothes as the members what we see in the first half of the video except for Ayan because you know remember i told you remember baby blue sweater now he's in like light brown jacket so this is a different Ayan. then hyunjin runs into chan who was protecting the door while talking from walkie talkie with Ayan from the mirror and they all live through the door but important thing to find out that Ayan who left through the door was in light brown jacket and at the end we see Ayan in his baby blue sweater by himself sitting on the merry-go-round so as far as I understand they left the real Ayan behind and accidentally took the clone with them fun thank you astronaut for humbling me <laughs> because as soon as I thought oh my god maybe I'm actually kind of smart maybe I understand think of humbling me now I know I don't know anything and now clay free Leventer, the last album of the Claire series and uh, if Astronaut was like Astronaut pushed me to the ground Leventer jumped on my lane by starting with the teaser this pyramid this pyramid represents their dream this is also why at the end of the video uh when they like reach the pyramid it collapses in front of them because that big pyramid was supposed to be the new world like what they wanted but they let go of the dream throughout like the whole music video and that's why like it collapsed in front of them also we see felix being compass again nothing new and the door appears now once again stay with me hold my hand and uh, calm me down if I start crying, please. Every decision that they made through their way left a mark. It all left a mark on the storyline, but also on the maze itself. So, so in a way, Strikis the, themselves became the part of the maze because they left a mark there. Right? So now then they try to leave the maze, it all crumbles because they are the part of the maze. This this whole storyline, they want to go against the system, thinking that breaking it will make them happy, that they're gonna free other people. But in reality, the thing that would actually help them, the thing that they need is to find themselves because they understood it everything around them collapses because this was like the key to actually escape that maze oh, am i making sense please tell me you understand me <laughs> in the bridge we see ian kind of like looking looking back like all of them are moving on and ian is like not sure he's like looking back not sure if what they're doing is right and we see a line, I was afraid of letting go of you, but I had to. And then we hear the greatest line in all of the music industry. Felix says, it's, it's over so good now. now. And they all enter the door. <laughs> At the end, we see the field from Elevator, and we also see two moons colliding. Alexa, play Collision by Stray Kids. I don't have Alexa. Which probably like means a new beginning for Stray Kids uh, who know who they are now. They finally found themselves. Yay! And I'm done with Lavender! It, it does not become simple because the next one is Top. Top is like a soundtrack to the Tower of God anime. So I, I, I really do not think that it, I really don't think that it would be like a part of the storyline, but it is. The Tower of God anime is uh, about trying to reach to the top of a tower but on every floor there's like a challenge that 
help, helps you to become stronger and like only very once can get to the top. At some point, like the characters in the anime understand that to reach to the top, they have to stay together. Like they can be like by themselves, they have to be together. And of course there's some traitors. The point is you have to be together, right? <sighs> and that's exactly what we see in the music video. All of them just fighting for the top, except for one motherfucker, Hyunjin. Hyunjin is like breaking the glass, clearly angry, but also maybe with a little bit of tears in his eyes. I don't know. Um, he looks a little bit teary eyed, no? Am I the only one? Anyways. Uh, and like he actually make, make, makes it harder for the boys. But in my personal opinion, like as I said, there's traitors in the Tower of God. Uh, anime, but in my personal opinion, I don't think that Hyunjin is the traitor. And to be honest, I think like that solely because of well, first of all, eyes, uh, he's like tears in his eyes, but also this dance move, he literally tries to like save them. But I also have to let you know that there is a theory that Hyunjin is a traitor. I personally don't think this is the case, but there is a theory like that out there in Stable. And now, oh my god, thanks to Bookish Theories for having a brain for coming up with theories and sharing those theories with us. Because I would never think about it, but they did, and here we are. In Levanter, there's two moons who collide, red and blue, and then collide. Here we see the red light and the blue light create like this streak of light. There they live in the end of the music video. The same happened with two moons. Plus, in top, their enemy is the wind. And Levanter is the wind. <laughs> and once again, we see that again, while the other members are like running, trying to like go to the top, trying to help each other, do this thing, we see Ayan sitting there with tears in his eyes. Because that fucker knows something. I don't know what he knows, but he knows something. And then we go, to God's menu, which honestly, thank God for God's menu, because this was the first music video in like a while where I was like, I think I understand things. <laughs> so, in Levantar, Stray Kids like finally found themselves, right? And in God's menu, they actually show their true selves to us and uh, flex a little bit, yes, they deserve it, let them flex. In the music video we see three main elements. Cooking in the kitchen. Kitchen is where the dish is created. And we all know, <laughs> all their dishes bussing. Here we just established that this dish, like this product, music in their case, is what they are doing, like they are the ones who create their own dish. And also, have you seen the start of God's Menu? All of them just throwing stuff up, like they're just experimenting completely, it's just so fun, chaotic a little bit. This chaos they create, their thing that they love and a lot of people love. The second thing is scientists. And we see scientists in construction because scientists do what? Experiment. And it just shows us once again that Strike is experimenting while creating their stuff. And uh, the third element is car racing, which represents like the competitive nature of the music industry. And in the end, they live through a back door, literally spoiling the next tr title track. But before that, the teaser for In Life. Stray Kids are faced with the door that they have to unlock. And ta-da! New things! We have superpowers now! <laughs> in my opinion, in my theory, those superpowers are just to show that now when street kids find themselves, they like, they unlock new powers, they can do whatever, they can do anything! Uh, <laughs> what is hair is everywhere. And by combining their powers, they open the door. My case. Which is once again, the theme of uh, teamwork and friendship is a big part of the storyline for all of the music videos. And back door is the time where Stray Kids actually accomplish something that they tried to do before but failed. 
and they tried to do it in mirror they tried to wake up the sheeple and they were not for it but now we see people in those white hoodies who are like a part of this society they're like sheeple yeah i don't know how to, how to explain those people people who don't try to stand out who lost their individuality due to society and just the system what we live in and those people throughout the whole music video we see them like first of all start, starting to kind of get into street kids like you know at first they're just standing there and they're like bobbing their heads a little bit and at the end we see the secret all of the start of the music video we see Mino turning on the light in the art museum oh yeah. In my opinion, the art gallery that they're in represents like creativity, individuality, and uh, Mina just like turns the light on, oh my God. turns the light on for other people to see it. Like you, like this is all that we can do. While well, the guards always turn it off to like forget about that, go be a sad adult person who works a job that they hate, but you have to because you have to survive in this dark scary world <laughs> throughout the whole music video we see other members turning off on the lights while the guard again turns them off and kids on yada 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 the whole music video and yeah we see people in the white hooded clothes that we saw in district 9 the family started jamming to street kids with us last thing i would love to find out because i love the fucking move molly what's happening and that's like this this move Whoever the choreographer that, whoever came up with that move, all the awards should be yours for the dance. I just love that move, not because it only looks like very aesthetically pleasing, but it's also the reference to the creation of Adam by Michelangelo. It's just so genius, not only like it's very pretty to look at, but also like it's God, the creator, giving life to the Adam, his creation. In Stray Kids case, both of the roles played by Stray Kids, which also means like they're not only the creator of the art, they also the art themselves. Who came up with the dance move? Raise your hands. Awards. Awards should be given. <laughs> then we go to Thunderous or firstly Noisy. Noisy still don't know how to pronounce that one correctly. Sun Monster is upon us. He tries to silence the people and take away their voices. And the kids have to beat it for all of us. We see him screaming, I wanna go home, because the noise monster is affecting him. And we actually don't see other members being affected by the noise monster, but also he screams, I wanna go home. Maybe meaning that this world is not his world, because he's, he's not... The, the, Remember, Ayan switched up. Ayan switched up. I'm still confused about Ayan. So kids members are running from the attack of sound monster, like, you know, of this red orb. And we see Felix talking with us, with Steve, like, through, like, a live stream. And he wears blue. But when the members are running to him, they're like, Get out, help us! And he does that. Which is, this, I noticed. I noticed it before. We know that it's, like, a thing Felix, Felix does when he's nervous. And while he does that, his clothes change color. Why have I never noticed that before? Anyways, thunderous music video. Here, the kids are... Dokkaebi? Dokkaebi? Do it's goblins in Korean mythology who can be a little mischief, but uh, they like still protect people from the evil. Not you again. We also see blue flames everywhere and blue flames is a way for what's happening why are you looking <laughs> the blue flames is a way for goblins to like mark their territory like if you see blue flame this this is their this is their place get off the whole music video they fight against people who bubble them the haters if you will and i also like to find out that uh the whole music video like, they're using cars, like, we just clearly see that Stray Kids are, like, not from this time period. I personally think that it's to show, like, the new generation of singers. But yeah, that leads us to Maniac and Ordinary Era and Babes, once again. 
I'm fucking confused. <laughs> anyway, it's the ordinary era. We see Felix who did a lock. The posters, we see that the members are missing. And Felix goes to the ordinary shop. And once he enters there, it becomes ordinary. He probably once again wanted to lure Felix in, like, you know, which is ordinary shop, come on. And then greeted by Chandler. Chandler is like a receptionist, um, just like, you know, a side hustle, for instance, a side of an idol. He looks at Felix weirdly, but he lets him in. And, and, you know, through his iPad, he, like, sends a message to other members to, like, just let them know Felix is here. Be prepared, guys. Be prepared. Then we see Han and the clocks. And we also notice that the clocks go backwards which again show shows us that you know this is an ordinary place everything is upside down i think then we see sunmin with a camera again he takes a photo of felix and then we see sunmin with a cake and there's a baby picture of sunmin on the cake then we see again an important thing to find out that we see all those clones in red lights right but when Ayen enters the scene, he's in blue light. Which red? Ordinary. Blue? Ordinary. <laughs> but again, maybe this is like the Ayen that they left in Astro, maybe this is the real Ayen, honestly. Once again, I don't know where the Ayen is. Then we see Ryuk <laughs> from Death Note, <laughs> or Hinjin, and he buys an apple, which Ryuk did the same thing in Death Note, and I think apple like is a symbol of death or something like that. And when we see Nino, who just wanted to scare Felix a little bit, you know, just for shit and, shit and giggles. Then we see Chandin with his free hug sign, which again, probably to lure Felix because we know that Felix loves cuddles. And Felix escapes Chandin and uh, runs to the top of the building and there he sees my husband. And uh, my hubby asks him like <laughs> a question like, do you want to be ordinary? And uh, Felix says, yes, I guess. <laughs> and he also opens up a lock, which, you know, to show, to symbolize that he's like, said yes. Hyunjin pushes Felix off the building and jumps after him. And while they're falling, the lock breaks completely, probably symbolizing the death of the ordinary Felix, and in the end we see Felix joining the whole ordinary crew. In Manic music videos, three kids encourage us to unleash our inner maniac. Maniac is freeing, but at the same time we see that no matter how much we want to be ourselves, society and just real worlds world <laughs> holds as back because we do see that balance in the music video of them just having fun and like being themselves and then they are going back to like trying to be normal people we also see once again two worlds the ordinary one and the ordinary one which is where we have fun and we also see a bird throughout the music video flying around where we see them like vibing having fun being themselves but at the end, it's in the cage, bird symbolizing the freedom. And in the real world, it's locked up. In the ordinary world, it's flying around. And I will talk about it briefly, because here I think I need to combine four music videos, five, <laughs> in like one story, because it's another storyline. It all started on mixtape Gone Days. There, we were just in school. They were friends, having fun. Then they go to mixtape on track. They are still friends, but they are doing a project where they had to film. The leads of that project is uh, Mino and uh, one girl. And it turns out Mino and Hyunjin both like kind of have a crush on her. Go girl! Go girl! Like two of the hottest men in the world. What's your secret? And maybe Yeni's possible crush on Hyunjin. I don't know. I don't know. Mino and the girl read actors. Hyunjin is a cameraman and they need to film like a romantic scene. Hyunjin got dealt and stopped them from shooting it. Everyone found out about his feelings uh, towards the girl and uh, it kind of broke the friendship between uh, Mino and Hyunjin. Going to be me. 
Oh, another heartbreaking one. There we see how the breaking of their friendship affected them. Like they were just all sad. Mino gets hit by a car and we see Han like in no time being next to him. Here's the tea. Why is it like that? Why is Han the first one? To be there in no time because Han was actually the one who was driving the car. I don't think it was intentional, but like, still not a great thing to do. But don't worry, Mino is alive. I guess there's no something that he's dead there, so we don't really know. But I follow a different theory, okay? <laughs> and now it's time for her mixtape. Eh. Oh, they graduated the school and they're packing their things up, but. We see a lot of tension between all of them, but especially between Han and Mino, which again probably to show us that Han was the one <laughs> behind the wheel. But we can clearly see that they like miss each other, like looking through the old stuff, or Ayan hallucinates <laughs> Felix at one point in the store. So Ayan tried to call Hyunjin, but Hyunjin did not pick up. Um, Hyunjin is painting an eye, which is probably a reference to the view, and uh, then uh, he leaves to the rooftop, just to hang out for a second, calm down a little bit. In that exact time, Mino came to Hyunjin, but Hyunjin is there and he does not know where he is. Uh, Mino waits there for some time, um, Hyunjin didn't come, and he leaves a note. We don't know what it says. Um, but Hyunjin's come back, reads a note, and kind of does a little... And then, in the end, we see him looking at the entrance, being surprised why we are not sure but we do think that this is like you know probably Mino coming back and he saw him once again but do we know for sure no just like with everything <laughs> ah and also <laughs> oh God. we see that uh, mixtape o e whatever you call it uh, happens on uh, March 25, which is their birthday as a group. Uh, we, this is why Felix has like a cake, because he wants to celebrate with all of them. And uh, he also finds this uh, phrase in a book, dreams come true to those who truly want them, which became an icon in the fandom. And by the end of the music video, we see Felix making a wish to unite with his members. And uh, finally, we get the view. And you can look at it uh, from different um, points uh, because there's not like significant proof why, but a lot of us, a lot of stay think that the view is actually the dream. Like, you know, Felix uh, wanted them to unite and this is Felix's dream. Like, he, this is what he wanted, the view of them hanging out together. If this is a dream, what is the reality? And the reality is lonely street. But two kids are not leaving us this sad. <laughs> because in the end, we see all of the members like laying, assumingly unconscious, I don't know why, but they laying together. And then Lino sits up and kind of gives us a little bit of <laughs> a little smile. I think it probably means that there's gonna be a continuation to lonely street. Uh, to that storyline and uh, because you know we see that no matter what happens they so somehow end up together now we have pp the big heart monster who makes people fall in love like they did at the start of felix right and that started a whole mess to the point where what chanbin had to call the police the pp affected stray kids go to spread some love in the police office <laughs> and when the police go there try to catch them and again remain uncaught once again just to show that you can stop them the love is too fucking strong and we see three kids like being in a hard place like symbolizing the inner feelings the police eventually show up in that hard place and pull out the plug kind of like turn off the feeling uh, and uh, while they celebrate, they win in a dance. Pippi Sunmin, just rewinding time to let the Pippi win, the Pippi Street Kids win. If it's a hint that they actually can like go 
through time and their music videos are actually not related in at all. I don't want to hear it. Once again, it shows us that their love is too strong and you cannot stop them. Their love wins in their heart and they actually like break through the screen to go into the real world. The sound. <laughs> again, two worlds. Like with every music video. Felix can communicate with the other world through ATV, which I think is a reference to Poltergeist, but <laughs> who knows? The sound monster right now is in the second world, and so kids from that world try to fight it by like playing music. But then we see Sonmin in the kitchen of the real world, and uh, there's like a glass of water, and we see water is like not still, like it shakes a little bit, showing us that the sound monster from the oh, from that world. <laughs> actually so powerful that can go to this world. We see that the sound monster from the second world actually went into the first world and now Strick is from both worlds are fighting it. So in here when they dance, I think like the, the whole storm behind them, I think it's like to symbolize an actual fight that's happening at the battle. And the music video stops and I think it's important to point out that we're actually not sure who won or who lost. And there's also a theory that uh, the noise monster uh, like still exists and PP and uh, the octopus from the S-Class are the creatures that the sound monster like gets to find three kids. And finally, S-Class. Let's start with five star trailer. We are playing the I'm Ground game. Ayan introduces himself first and he's also the only member who introduces himself by his actual name. Then we see Chanbin and he says that he's a uh, romantic, but when we see him talking on the phone and after that he crushes everything around him, probably showing that he actually got dumped. Which once again, Chanbin, one chance, I would never do it to you. <laughs> and Hyunjin, he says 644, which is angel number and it means to like you should take risks. Which I also think is shown in his part because like, you know, in the start, you, we see him like showing a normal blazer, jacket, whatever, and the mannequins are like booing him, but then he takes risks. He actually does his own painting and uh, on the jacket and everyone applauds, which means like, take risks, people will love it. Then Han, he shows us a picture of a train flying in the sky. Does it mean anything? I don't know. Uh, but then he says, like, this isn't it, then I won't do it. Which, again, shows Strikit's attitude through their creation. If it's not the music they make, how they make it, how they want it to be made, they don't want to do it any other way. Sunmin is just a menace, nothing new. This scene, to me, just shows how Strikit's always want to st stood out. Like, cars only, okay, I will bring the most obnoxious car you ever saw. Then we see Felix, and he introduces himself as a conductor. Why, everyone? Say it with me. Because he is a compass in this universe. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. I don't know how this video, how long this video will be, but thank you, because it's a lot. I understand. I, my head hurts just by reading what I wrote. Then we see Chan, and he has a metronome, which is like a thing that... Uh, gives you the beat. But we see Chan being so passionate about his music that he actually doesn't well I can have that beat said like he just he plays so hard that the piano is on fire by the end of it. And then that man had me on my knees <laughs> every time I see this clip Chan enough. But really that more was like you don't like it? What are you gonna do about it? Write a hate tweet to your five followers on Twitter? Okay, go do that. I will, you know, just sell 5 million copies of my album. Real quick, very quick. I'll just... No, no big deal, no big deal. And the next... Lino is cute. Do I even need to explain <laughs> why he said that? Have you seen him? He's so cute. And then they break boundaries so much that they break any physic laws. <laughs> like, they go in between the worlds because they're that powerful. Only Stray Kids. And oh my god, S-Class. First we see Stray Kids in a regular, normal street. But as soon as Stray Kids enter 
They break the boundaries and the mirror. In the five star trailer, Stray Kids like breaking the like they they are going from on, on walking on the building to a different world. So maybe this uh, mirror also symbolizes that they're breaking like this. How do we say that? This like wall between the worlds. I don't know. Behind that mirror, we see everything Stray Kids related. The blue flames. This guy, this guy, him on the horse, basically all the reference to the previous music videos. Here we see Son Min working on a little model of a car. Once again, once again, showing you bitches, showing you bitches that they are the ones who made themselves. They started from that little fucking car that Son Min crafted. And now they are S class. They made themselves from scratch into S class automobile and we also see this little guy who probably represents the haters and in my opinion he looks too cute for that role and we see the SWAT team aka STAY and to no surprise three kids and SWAT stay defeat the monster and um, as a part of SWAT stay let me tell you it was so fucking easy doesn't even compare to a day in on Twitter being a stay. <laughs> I hope you understand now the basics. I hope I was clear enough to explain what I mean because, as you know, English is not my first language. So sometimes, sometimes uh, you may not be very clear on what I'm saying, and I'm sorry for that. Anyways, oh that my legs are numb now. <clears throat> Anyways, I love you all very very much. Thank you for watching. If you if you if you watch the whole video from start to end. I love you and thank you. <laughs> like you're a real one. I really don't expect a lot of people to do that. So if you did, thank you very much. And I will see you. Bye bye. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to bother you a little.